very happy 4th of July to everyone out there. This is Greg Stanley. I'm Greg Stanley, your host of Auto Sausage, where we grind up bits of automotive awesomeness into a fairly brief podcast. It depends on how fast I'm talking today. Today, we're going to talk about a lot of different things. And if you go to the website, autosausage.com, you can check out the blog and see all the links to everything. And if you're on our mailing list, you will get all this information direct in your inbox. First off, congratulations to Jim K for winning the Auto Sausage Auction Guessing Game number six. So you won a stainless steel camo tumbler, Buckhead Mechanics gloves, and a uranium three-watt LED flashlight, which is really cool and really bright. So those are on their way to you right now. And if you've never played this game before, Game 7 is live now, and it is for Mecham Denver Auction. So make sure you place your high bid guesses for five cool cars. You can listen to our last podcast to find out what those five cool cars are, and I'll go ahead and tell you right now. A 1967 Shelby GT500, a 1964 VW 21 window bus, a 1989 328 Ferrari GTS, a 1972 Chevrolet K5 Blazer, and a 1998 Corvette Pace car. So the winner for this auction game will receive about $240 worth of Tillamook beef jerky, about $98.75 worth. Black Magic Car Care Prizes, a lot of different cool things for your car. And Cosmo Snack Shack Dog Treats. So if you have a dog, they'll be in doggy heaven. It's like dried up pig ears, little sausages, dog bones, all sorts of really cool stuff. So you can play now by going to autosausage.com and just click on the Play Now little tab there. You can hear my advice on what your guesses could be or should be. By listening to my last podcast, I pretty much go over everything using the Haggerty Price Guide. I've been really accurate, around 98% accurate on the cars that actually sold, and I'm about 86% accurate, including the cars that did not sell, which sometimes those are huge misses. Overall, I've been doing tremendously well. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but a couple months ago, I talked about the Paul Newman Porsche I found in a shed in North Georgia near my dad's house, and then I talked about it again when it did not sell at Meekum in Indianapolis a few, I don't know, six weeks ago or so. And I talked to the painter, the owner had passed away. And I know that the bid was $150,000, which was way under the estimate, which was $450,000 to $550,000. Well, it actually did sell eventually. So it ended up in Adam Carolla's collection. So I was listening to his car cast podcast the other day, and he mentioned this new Porsche that he got. It's coming from the Southeast. It's Paul Newman's car, 1974. It's the car. So I'm dying to find out what happened like behind the scenes. I'm going to call up the painter and find out what happened. I'll see if I can get a price for everyone so we can see how reality syncs with uh, what the auction estimate was. So it's going to California. It's going to be in his significant collection, which he has all the Paul Newman racing cars, including a Porsche 935 he paid $4.5 million for. And it will be on a racetrack sometime soon, which would be really cool to see that car. I'm actually going to reach out to them because I have some pictures I took while it was being restored. And I'm going to see if they would like the pictures. And all I ask is I give Auto Sausage a little shout out on his podcast. So we'll see. I mean, you know, they're like number nine or ten. I don't know. They're way up there. So we'll see. That would be kind of cool if they do it. Other news. A legendary local cruise in here near Cincinnati is shutting down. And all the cars are going to be auctioned off soon by RM Sotheby. So this is kind of sad, kind of not totally unexpected. Up in Dayton, Ohio, I'm, I'm, I don't know the guy's name offhand, but there was a big Porsche collector up there where they would be, have like the cruise ins on Sunday morning or whatever, cars and coffee. Well, he passed away apparently of cancer. And this is a good while ago. This is like eight or 10 years ago. So he had this awesome, incredible man cave. And I'll post pictures on my Instagram handle, at Auto Sausage soon. And in this man cave, it was a building downtown Dayton. He did amazing things. Like he had a, someone come in and paint all these murals on the walls. Like every wall was covered with a mural. It might be a city street scene with an old building. And in the building windows were painted caricatures of famous people like the Blues Brothers or Marilyn Monroe. And it was just amazing. He had uh, characters like, the cars from the movie Cars painted on the walls. It was just really, really amazing. And he had this amazing collection of Porsches, mostly Porsches, and some really rare stuff. So this is where I saw my first Porsche RS. I think it was 1974. It's white with blue stripes. And I posted a picture on Instagram a couple years ago how the back seat was basically just you know a bunch of cushion fabric wrapped around in some leather, and that was it. 
they were restoring it at the time. So long story short, I ended up being there because it turned into an event center. So I went there for a Christmas party. And so at this Christmas party, there was a lot of non-car folks. Well, I'm just drooling, walking all over the place, trying to get talk about all this stuff and see all this stuff. And I got a tour in the back room mm-hmm. where I saw this Porsche RS. They also had like a, I don't know, 1962 Carrera Speedster that's coming up for sale. It was the first Carrera GT I had ever seen in person. And I think they sold that one a few years ago. And they even had a 356 once owned by Eva Perone from Avita. Don't cry for me, Argentina. Now that car is not part of the sale. So I'm kind of curious what's happening there. So I'll go more in depth on this on a future podcast. One car that I'm just drooling all over is a 1997 Porsche Turbo S, I believe. But as a paint to sample, like a pearl color with matching wheels, it is just absolutely gorgeous. So more to come, especially as we get closer to the Taj Garage auction with RM Sotheby soon. So it's already in the news. You'll see it. You can uh, check my website for the links. Next, finally, Barrett Jackson has a lawsuit-free Ford GT coming up for sale soon. So what's interesting, this is a 2017 Ford GT in the Heritage Edition, the number two car from Le Mans, and it's only been driven 20 miles, which is totally crazy. So if you recall, you had to fill out an essay or a video and all these forms to apply to become an owner for a Ford GT. And one of the parameters for the sale is what you had you had to agree not to sell it for two years because they didn't want people flipping it and just making money on their car. And so originally these were about six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And now one quote unquote sold at Mecham last year when I was there in Indianapolis for one point seven. Well that ended up going into a court case and all sorts of issues happened. John Cena, the reality star, was famously sued by Ford and Ford won for flipping his Ford GT. So this is one that apparently can be sold. It's not quite out of the two-year agreement. So I'm kind of surprised that it is selling. And I'm just wondering if Ford will blacklist this buyer from future sales uh, for buying the future collectible cars for doing this. That's kind of interesting because I have a couple friends of mine that applied and were turned down. One of them is has an extensive Ford collection and he would drive the heck out of this car. He would show it all over the place. It's really sad that he got turned down. The other guy actually vintage races Shelby's, including a 65 Shelby GT350. He was turned down as well. And he was so upset that he said he was going to sell his Shelby's. I don't know if he did or not. He had a really original 67 GT500 lime green car uh, Shelby that I would love to have. He had those two. He had a 2006 Ford GT. He's a big Ford guy. And yet he could not get this particular car and was very upset about it. Interesting story. We'll see what happens there. Seems like you could do a whole podcast just on the Ford GT. Now, something that's really cool that was just created, Porsche Club of America PCA created a resource to capture all of the different paint codes for all of the Porsches in history, it looks like, on a new website called Renbow, R-E-N-N-B-O-W, which sounds like Rainbow, which is a great name. You can go on the website and you can see all these little outlines of Porsches in different colors and you can click on the color and it basically tells you what the, well, you can see what the name of the paint code is. You you click on it, it shows the paint code, shows the years that it was manufactured, the cars or SUVs with the McCann and the Cayenne. And then it would tell you how rare of a paint code it was. So if it had one paint bucket, it wasn't very rare. If it had five paint buckets, it was very rare. So that was a lot of fun checking out some of those. Some of the ones that popped out to me were the Mamba Green Metallic. Some of these are just names. Riviera Blue is a famous Porsche color. And they had an Ellie Creamsicle for the 914s. One wish I have is that they would make a PTS filter, paint to sample filter, so that you could just click a button and it just pulls up all the previous paint to sample cars, car colors with the number of cars produced, which I think is known. So if there were five of this particular shade of green, it would list that out. That would be really interesting and fascinating to see. The driving force behind this was Porsche Panoramas, the magazine, very own Rob Sass. And I just happened to listen to my favorite podcast about cars, Mark Green's Cars Yell podcast this week. And he was a recent guest. So go to my link on my page and you'll be able to click Another link that would take you to Rob's interview. Just as a heads up, last week I was fortunate to be interviewed for a radio station in North Carolina for Joe Pep's Every Car Has a Story radio show. So you can go and check that out on their YouTube page, Twitter, Facebook page. These were great guys, Rusty and Joe Pep. It was a really fun interview. 
just talking about the podcast, where it came from, that kind of stuff. So be sure to check it out. Really nice guys. I hope to be on there again in the future. So we will see. Something else I ran across that I thought was pretty cool. A big thing right now with Porsche is people are making these Safari Porsches, kind of like the old Dakar Rally cars, where you take a Porsche, you add fog lights, you add a full suspension, big wheels. It can go off-road, no problem. Well, I saw my first Safari Lamborghini the other day, which is called the Serato, which means dirt in Italian, which kind of makes sense. Go to, uh, I think it was, actually it was a Lamborghini prototype. So if you go to their website, you should be able to see it. It was really cool to see that. Something else I just wanted to make mention of, I've said many times on this podcast that I'm seeing some big trends out there, a big demographic change in the marketplace. And a couple of things that are happening, vintage SUVs have been up really hard lately. I think the Toyota FJs have peaked as well as the Broncos. Mostly the FJs are starting to decline a little bit. Muscle cars have been trending down across the board, which is great if you want to buy one like me. I think Porsches have peaked. They've kind of hit their stride and now they're declining a little bit. And then perfect low mileage Asian cars from the 1990s are selling for like really crazy money. Uh, if you go to my blog, I posted a couple articles I think are fun to read. Haggerty has this nice article about 25 cars losing steam, which of those 25 cars, uh, ironically, it says there's the C2, C3 Corvette, so the 63 to the 67 Corvettes, my favorite year. They're losing steam as well as the next year, the 68 through 82 are losing steam. I would say 83, but there was only one 1983 Corvette ever made, and it's in the Bowling Green, Kentucky Museum. Porsche 930s from the 70s and 80s, the turbos, are losing steam as well as, as, well as Barracudas and Thunderbirds. So it kind of aligns with what I've been saying. Uh, and there's even a few Mercedes in there that are losing some steam, which I uh, that was news to me. So that was kind of surprising. Now, what is selling? Well, Barrick Jackson, they just had their Northeast auction, and their top 10 really highlighted what was selling. Ironically, seven of the top 10 cars were built after 1996. Isn't that really kind of crazy? And another Toyota Supra sold for really stupid money, like $176,000. I actually think that was a 1996 car. So seven of the top 10 were within the last 20 years, 22 years. And the remaining three were actually resto mods, including this crazy Ford Bronco. So if you know of the Icon trucks, that Icon takes FJs and Broncos and you know, it does an amazing job to them, makes them like brand new. Someone did this with a Ford Bronco convertible, made it into a four-door. So it's really kind of crazy. There was a Shelby Eleanor Tribute car, 1967 C-Code Mustang Fastback that they turned into a Shelby Eleanor Tribute car. I'm kind of tired of those, but that was in there as well. And then a really impressively brown 1954 Buick Special. If you look at the pictures, everything's brown on this car or tan or beige including the drivetrain. So the drive shaft was actually painted this cool, like copper brown. That was pretty cool. If you just look at that little snapshot, the top 10 were resto mods, sport utes, or built after 1996. So anyone who says that there is not a democratic, anyone who says there is not a demographic shift is just crazy. They also, going, getting back to Haggerty, they also had a nice article on what you should buy that costs under $30,000. So you can check that out on my blog as well. And then if you have a little bit more money, they had another article about great cars to buy now before they cost too much. And ironically, my little 1999 Porsche 996 was in both articles. It was under 30000 way under 30000 like cut that in half. And that was also in the cars to buy before they go up in value. And they said the 996 is still a serious bargain for a fantastic to drive sports car. Everyone complains about the fried egg headlights and the front end that's from a Porsche Boxer. Kind of cheapen the front end of the 996. But nobody complains about the driving experience, which it is so much fun to drive. It's really crazy fun to drive. So you can check out my Instagram feed also to see where I've been lately. I popped around a couple different things. I was a judge at the Cincinnati Concourse the Elegance. I wrote a little article about my first judging experience. That's also in the blog. Last weekend, I went to the National Ford Fairlane Show, which was really fun and interesting, where I saw one of the coolest cars ever. It was like a 1970 Ford Fairlane station wagon, Woody, which doesn't sound that exciting, but it was like one of one with a 429 big block Super Cobra Jet engine 
with a Ram Air shaker hood scoop and a four speed her shifter. So that's what made it like super awesome. So that one is definitely on my Instagram feed right now. And don't forget to check out my educational podcast for students called Learn From Others. You can go to learnfromothers.org or just Google Learn From Others with your favorite podcast hosting provider. And be sure to share it with all the students in your life. I will be back next week talking about Pebble Beach, I believe. There's a lot of really cool stuff happening there, including the first Porsche ever is going to be sold. And then there is a big collection of Ferraris coming up, the Ming Collection, where it has every super performance Ferrari, you know, like the 288 GTO, the F40, the F50, the Enzo, the La Ferrari. What kind of gets me about that collection, because I've seen a number of those collections pop up, they're always missing the biggest, the baddest, the most special and spectacular Ferrari ever is the Ferrari GTO. And the reason that they're missing that is because that car is $40 million to $70 million. And so you can have all the other cool ones. I would just for once would love to see that collection with a GTO included. We'll see if that ever happens. Hasn't happened yet but hopefully it will. So have a great and safe 4th of July tonight, and I'll talk to you next week.